It's those memories like you you sit down, you think back on on stuff like that, and um, you know that I, I, that's why I enjoy conversations like this. But then that pod, this podcast too, because just depending on who you're podcasting with, you it's like it sparks memories back in your own mind of oh, your own experiences sure. and stuff over over time. And some of this stuff, like I like I remember my first year, but how often do I? like I just did walk back through my, my first little beginning to be a hunter experience, you know, I, I I don't do that a whole lot. And it's kind of a, kind of a stroll down, stroll down memory lane. Oh, you got her, dude. She's down. Let's go. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoked him. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely get your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Fall Obsession Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to another Fall Obsession Podcast episode. Our podcast is driven by Ridge Rock Hunt Company and the fine folks over there, and we will talk more about them here after a bit um, at the at the conclusion of our podcast. I am Sam with Fall Obsession, and I'm your podcast host. Thank you guys for tuning in. On here today once again with my main man, our media production manager, Nick Powell. What's up, buddy? Oh, what's going on? Oh, just happy to be back on here recording another podcast. You know how it goes. Thank you, Nick, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so kind of what inspired this conversation today, um, if you guys have listened to some of our episodes recently, I, I hope that you guys, as our listeners, our viewers, have gotten the hunting camp kind of laid back camaraderie brotherhood feel to our to our podcast. There's been some episodes here recently I definitely think have brought that um, into everything, S- kind of starting, I think, I'll take it all the way back to that Midwestern High crew that we had uh, come on the podcast and just recap their snow goose hunt this past spring, 97, 98. Those were that was just great conversation with great people, and then we took that all the way into episode 100, where we kind of used that as an, an opportunity for a milestone episode, and then recapped because you were absent for episode 100, Nick. We recapped yours in 101, but yep. those conversations we went we went into without a super strong agenda. We just went into them just kind of casually, just gonna see where the conversation takes us, and then again in 103 when you and I sat down with Andy, and literally no notes no agenda, no anything. We just talked and following just these past few weeks and these podcasts in particular, I've gotten a lot of feedback, um, from either my own friends that listen, some of our staffers, or even just folks on, on social media online that I know are, are loyal listeners, um, who have said, man, these episodes have been good. Like, and saying exactly what we're hoping to accomplish in that they feel like they're sitting there with us hanging out and that is really that's what we're trying to bring to this podcast a little bit more i think we get just as many people that enjoy the educational episodes whenever we have those um as they do these podcasts but um you know i talked before we start recording kind of about some inspiration i had for this conversation another casual conversation where you and i are hopefully just going to get to sit down and and hang out and talk for a little bit um, yeah. not necessarily, I know last time just you and I did this was your episode 101, 100 episode recap. So, um, you know, not, not necessarily talking about fall obsession podcast or the history of our podcast, more talking about our, our lives growing up, our lives getting into hunting and how it has all brought us here both in and outside of fall obsession, if that makes yep. sense. So, um, I think a great spot to kick off a a casual conversation is just at the beginning, you know, and how how we got into hunting and let's start with each of us talking about our very first memory that we have related to hunting. Gotcha. Yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll kick it off um with actually the the first deer that I ever killed in my entire life. Um I was 8 years old and um, we had this big lease that we basically had access to. Uh, it was, it was through my, the company that my dad worked for. 
and it was it was i think it was around 10 or 11,000 acres so it was a big big area um there had been a lot of big deer killed on this on this place and so we um my dad had been going there for years was very familiar with it uh would take us out there every now and then and uh that was how that wasn't the first place we ever hunted on we had we had another lease when i was really small um i barely remember that one because they would like hardly ever take me into the blind because obviously we know little kids in, in the blind are, are not a good mix. But um, <laughs> so this is the first memory that I'm very fond of and I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, so there's the the ranch that, that they had leased um, had a lot of very, very large grain fields. And that was uh, one way that they would um, work this land. They would run cows on it. And they would also run grain on it. And so uh, multiple different types of grain, whatever, you know, I guess the uh, market called for at the time didn't really matter. But um, and that was like one of my I remember that was one of my like favorite places to hunt because um, you just sit on the edge of one of these grain fields or, or maybe like 50 yards back in the in the trees where these deer pass and going to eat at night and um, it seemed like every time we would drive up to one of these grain fields, there would just be deer all over it. And so um, my very first deer, uh, I was finally old enough to to uh, to hunt. And this is when I, I want to say it's when the state of Texas started enforcing um, every hunter above the age of like 18 had to have hunters safety. Uh, and so like me, my dad, my dad's friend, we all took hunter safety together and, uh, I'll never forget it. It was like my local ag teacher was a, a hunter safety, uh, instructor. And so like we went to our, my, our, our local high school, sat down in a group of like maybe 10 to 12 old guys and me, <laughs> and, and, uh, we all sat through the, the, the whole class and I ended up scoring the highest out of the entire out of the entire uh, room. So oh boy. Uh, I always, always, I'll never forget that. Like my dad and his friend got, got 99s and I got a hundred. And so like, I was able, I was able to rub that in their face. But anyways, um, we went and sat on one of these grain fields. That was a little rabbit trail. Sorry about that. But uh, we went and sat on one of these grain fields and um, it was getting to the evening time. And I actually still have this deer on my wall today, but we, uh, Went and sat and we were in a ground blind, um, probably 20 or 30 yards back into the trees uh, on the edge of this grain field. And so we would, we're, what we were trying to do was catch these deer coming onto this grain field uh, for the evening for them to eat for that, for the night. And so um, we see this eight point buck coming up, coming up to this grain field and uh, before he even passes us to get on the grain field, he, uh, my dad says, Hey, you see that bug right there? And I'm like, yeah, I see him. And so I poke my little, uh, six millimeter up out of the, out of the blind. I, I aim at him. I see him in my crosshairs and I pull the trigger and that dude runs straight for the grain field and all the way out, uh, like in the middle of this field. And it's just, it's a huge field, like gigantic. And he runs out and, um, uh, my dad goes, did you hit him? I'm like, yeah, I think so. And, uh, so we wait a little bit till it gets pretty close to dark and we, we hop out, uh, hop out of the ground blind and we start walking towards the grain field and tracking him, whatever. And then we ended up actually finding him. Uh, it wasn't that great of a shot, you know, being an eight year old, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it, it did the trick. And so, uh, yeah, that was the, the first deer I ever killed was, a. Uh, little eight point eight point buck and i i'll i got a picture of, or I, I have him on my wall i'll send you a picture of him uh just so you can see what he looks like but yeah i'll never i'll never forget that that story that's awesome very first deer very cool yeah. well my first one is my my earliest memory is not my first deer it's it's actually the first time my dad ever took me out in the woods because when i was growing up we lived in I was born in Texas, but when I was really, really little, um, my parents moved up to Wyoming and we lived up in Wyoming for four years. And looking back on it, like I was, it was like from ages three to seven or eight, like somewhere in there. Um, okay. so I never, I never went hunting while I was up there and looking back on, I'm like, man, I really, 
like, yeah, everything worked out the way it was supposed to in my life for sure. And I wouldn't change anything, but it would have been really cool to live up there when I was like a teenager and could have yeah. taken more advantage of, you know, the hunting that that area has to offer. But Absolutely. anyway, when we came back to tax, uh, to Texas, my dad was, uh, he was a pastor at a, at a church and one of the, the guys in the church, like pretty much as soon as we moved in, settle in that first fall, he was like, Hey, I'm I want to take y'all, you know, you and your boy to, to my deer lease and let you, let you shoot a whitetail. He was like, Oh, okay, cool. Just a doe, put some meat in the freezer whatnot. Yeah. And so my dad, I think I want to say I was seven, I think at this time. And, uh, so my dad was like, Hey, you want to go? And I, I never been hunting. I'd seen my dad bring back like pheasants and stuff up in Wyoming whenever he went hunting up there, but I'd never gone. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. I had no idea what to expect. I just knew you wore camo and went out in the woods. That's about about <laughs> as much as I knew about it. So yeah. we, uh, Ken was this gentleman's name. He takes us out there and, uh, we're pulling, I, I want to say from my recollection, we're pulling into the place and we have to pass by this field that's out there and it's probably one o'clock in the afternoon and, uh, there's a bunch of does grazing out in that field um field that's on the property that we're able to hunt so he he pulls in he's like hey we can we can kind of come up this creek bed and come through this tree line you can hopefully get a shot so i remember going up through the creek and i'm just tagging along behind him and everything and my dad gets right up there on the edge i never got to watch the actual shot they made me stay down in the creek Um, (laughs) so my dad takes a shot and drops this doe so we go and walk up to it and everything and my dad like he i'll have to have him back on here to talk about some of this but Um, he, he likes to talk about how, you know, he, he wasn't really sure what to expect from me, you know, with dead animal and everything first time and stuff. And, um, you know, so we go up, we get the deer and we got to field dress it. So, um, and I told, I think I told this, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I podcasted with Delaney, um, he, uh, he was like, Hey, you can stay back by the Creek. You know, you don't have to stay up here while we, while we dress it out or anything, you know, and he explained to me what they were going to do. And by the time he was done dressing it out, I was looking over his shoulder. Like I was curious. I, I wanted to know, I wanted to see and everything. So <laughs> yeah. we put one on the ground then. And then later that evening, um, we went and sat in a, in a box blind, um, hunting, uh, hunting some corn. And, uh, I remember my dad had to, he had to wake me up once or twice, I think, because I was dozing off and my head was rubbing against the side of the blind and making all this noise and everything. And I was snoring at another point and he had to wake me up. So <laughs> I remember, I remember him waking me up and then finally, I, I think I dozed off and I woke up on my own. I looked out and there's a deer standing out there and I looked at my dad my eyes were about this big around. I was like, there's a deer out there. He's like, yeah, I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> so he gets, <laughs> gets his gun up, shoots another doe. Um, so that was my first my first time to go hunting the only time we went that year and then the next year um that gentleman actually was able to get my dad and i on that deer lease with him uh mm, so nice. and my dad was like do you, do you have any interest in hunting do you want do you want to hunt this year and i was like yeah i want to try it and so he he told me he's like after you kill your first deer um at that point you know you can i'll start letting you spread your wings and you can hunt by yourself but you're hunting with me until you kill your first deer and so mm-hmm. that that year was a very a very long season. I think it was a couple days after Christmas before I finally put a deer on the ground. That was after several, oh, yeah. several missed shots um, throughout that <laughs> year. Or so, but I, I finally got done on a big old doe, um, at the, at the end of that season and kept killing from there, I guess. Nice. So <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. But no, man, it, it's, it's those memories. Like you, you sit down you think back on, on stuff like that. And, Um, you know, that I, I, that's why I enjoy conversations like this, but then that pod, this podcast too, because just depending on who you're podcasting with you, it's like, it sparks memories back in your own mind of your own experiences and stuff over, over time. And some of this stuff, like I, like, I remember my first year, but how often do I, like I just did walk back through my, my first little beginning to be a hunter experience you know i i I don't do that a whole lot and it's kind of a kind of a stroll down stroll down memory lane for sure yeah absolutely yeah and it's a it's a you know everybody's lives are so busy nowadays it seems like and it's nice to just sit back and reminisce on on like what what we all did and what we all went through and, and got to experience and 
uh, just get to experience all over, all over again. So, yeah. Cool. I, I have another, another memory that just popped into my mind. I, I cannot in a hundred episodes for all I know, I could have told this story on the podcast before. I really don't remember. Um, but I think it was, it was probably my third or fourth year hunting out there. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, I think I was 12, 11 or 12, 13, somewhere in there at, at this point, probably 12. Um, and we were, we had a rule on the place, kind of like you and I have on our place with our dads now. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, if, if the guys aren't there, you know, like if, if I'm not there, you can hunt my stuff. You know, you can right. hunt my stands. Yeah. We're not trying to be stand hogs or anything. And that same, sure. that same kind of standing gentleman's agreement was at this lease that we were on. And I'll, I'll tell the story now that, you know, I have a platform and potentially this guy could hear this podcast at this point. But <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, so there's this one guy on the lease, I, I won't name names. One guy on the lease who had a stand and um, that evening my dad was like, hey, you want to hunt? this this stand i said yeah i'll i'll hunt there rifle hunt i wasn't a bow hunter at this point um so i go up there my dad drops me off at the bottom of this hill you know at the at the main road so i can walk in carry my chair and everything in there and i get to the stand there's a padlock on the stand and it's like come on man really <laughs> and at this point like it's getting to the time where i need to be in a stand and another stand is a long way away and i would be mm -hmm. kind of walking over my dad's area a little bit if i tried to move so i was like screw it i'm gonna hunt here anyway so i sat my chair down right next to that guy's stand just <laughs> sat down in front of it um <laughs> so i'm i'm sitting there and Pretty early on, I remember a doe kind of, it was, I want to say it was windy that day and a doe kind of came out for a quick minute and she was real skittish and, and left and everything. And we we're getting right to that last light, you know, that prime time, if you will. And I look off to my, off to my left and the grass is probably like waist, waist high or more. Like it's, it's tall blowing in the wind. And I just see these dark chocolate antlers moving through that grass. And I was like, oh my gosh. Nice. And about the time I look, this head comes up and looks at me, and I'm like, that's a good buck. Like, I outside his ears and everything, mm -hmm. and uh, he turns, and as soon as he turns, I throw my I throw my gun up, and I couldn't see his body or anything. And, and at that time, like, my dad and I, we, we weren't into shoulder mounts or anything like that. You know, we were, we were meat hunters. You know, still are. Yeah. But I throw my gun up, and I put it right behind his ear and pull the trigger, and that thing, boom, drops right in that grass. Heck yeah. That's him right there. Okay. The old chocolate horn tan. That was the first buck of a decent size that I actually ever killed. I, I just now realized that looking at the podcast video that he's <laughs> actually behind me right now. But um That worked out. I remember that. That was just that's one of those memories that just popped in my mind, but that was my first my first decent sized buck that I ever killed was was yeah. that big old chocolate horn tan. He was an old deer too. If I can find the picture of him, um I'll post it in with this episode or something because like, you can see all the gray in his face and everything and like oh, I, yeah. I think we put him at like probably seven years old or something so he was a good he was a, he was a mature deer for sure old warrior but yeah that's cool yeah yeah i keep thinking i keep thinking of stories of like memories that i have and i'm like i've already told this on the podcast i've already told that one on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember if i've told that one on the podcast or not I, really what i wanted I, I don't think so yeah I, again man i who knows? Like, we've got. I've gone off on so many rabbit trails on our podcast that it's just like, man, did I'll say it again? I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know what we've talked about doing, and we've mentioned this previously, is that we need to find a time, and it might even at this point be until fall, but a time when we're like maybe all four of us, you and me and our dads, are out there at the lease or something. We can yeah. get all four on a podcast or something. I know I want to get my dad back on here too, and. Um, cause just, again, some of these, some of these old stories are just, they're, they're too. Yeah, and I know my dad has some, and he'll be, he'd be able to talk more about like the, the big ranch we used to hunt on and then the lease, cause we had a lease down in San Saba as well. And he, he was very familiar with that one. And it's funny cause like at least in San Saba, the only thing I remember about it is what we would stay in, like what we would sleep in at night. And it was yeah. this old, like rat infested school bus <laughs> and like i mean it was 
like it was not warm at night or anything <laughs> like it was rough in it but like you, we might as well have, have set up a tent because that's you know it's as good as that uh you know just using the bathroom outside you know whole the whole deal like it was it yeah. was rough that's that's the only thing i remember about that that whole that whole lease but that was when i was like real real little like i don't know probably four or five yeah and so yeah we uh our first lease this this property i've been talking about um it was down in in central texas um probably i guess it's around four hours south of the dallas fort worth area so it was a haul down there but it was it was a really good place it was 300 something acres and pretty pretty good mix of like hills and fields and hardwood cedars like mesquite yeah. thickets it had, it had a lot of stuff um i encourage our listeners I, I want to do this real quick to go back and listen all the way to episode number three because i had my dad on that was the first time my dad ever came on the podcast and during that podcast him and i talked about a lot of these old stories um I've had a couple float in my mind since we've been talking that I want to tell, but they've been told in episode three and they're told better by my dad. So I either want our listeners to go back and listen to episode three or we'll wait and have my dad tell them again when, when yeah. he's on here next. Um, but that property was, was prime for us. Um, we've hunted a couple different places since then in between then and, and the Texas dirt property we're on now. Um, but smaller tracks nothing nothing that big and certainly not as big as as what we have now you know what, yeah. what we're working with um but i remember we we varied a lot in in that after i killed my first deer i started hunting by myself pretty much all the time and we we looked at again we're we're meat hunters we're out there having fun building memories and everything but at the same time we're we're filling the freezer so we split up, you know, cover more ground and everything. Yep. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that it was really kind of hitting me how long it had been since I hunted with my dad. You know, mm -hmm. it, it had really been a, almost a decade probably since we like spent a lot of time. Like we'd be in camp, but then like especially after I started driving, you know, in high school, it was like I'm... I'm at the, I'm gone. I'm going hunting, you know, and my dad would be at work. And so it was, you know, it was like the, the bond and, and relationship was still there, but it was, it had, it had grown farther apart and not intentionally, but just how it had happened. And I remember we didn't have a lease for a couple of years and our family's birthday present to my, and my dad talks about this hunt in episode three, but, um, my dad's, our birthday present to my dad was a, a whitetail hunt down in, down in, uh, South Texas. So I got to go down there with him and spend three days actually in a blind video and forum um, on this hunt. And this it's actually uh, in season two, I think, of our Fall Obsessed Outdoors series that we used to run. It's on our website yeah. and our YouTube channel. Guys can go watch it. But um, got him a buck. Really fun trip. Um, we we just we had a blast getting to hang out. And I think that's when it was it kind of hit both of us. It was like, man, we. We need to get a deer lease again. We need to get back into this together and, and get yeah. back on it. And that's, so it's been really cool in going into the first year now with you and I, I know, I know all four of us hadn't even shared a, a hunting camp as four people yet, but you know, being on the Texas dirt property now down here with you and your dad, um, it's at least given us the opportunity to, to be able to do that. Cause I think, especially after rifle season open, like, most every trip that I took out there, he, he was with me or I was with him. So it was, yeah, that's cool. And I, I haven't even been out there. I think we, when we went to first look at it, look at the property to see if we even wanted to lease it. That was like the only time that we've been out there together. And so this was like, I don't know, probably a year ago now. Cause I know probably more than a year ago. I think it was like April, maybe. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, it was, it was, April, April. It was around a year, April or May. Yeah. I think. And, and so, like, I've been out there with my wife one time, and then I've been out there by myself one time. And that's all That's all that I've, because last year I was being greedy and, and going after the big Collin County buck. Man, rightfully so, man. You had a freaking big deer out, yeah. out, out close to home that you were trying to kill. So I, yeah, I'd and, probably and, be doing you know, the same. 
yeah, and life had happened. You know, I had I had just had my second kiddo in June of last year, and so uh, it was like I really needed to be home. And hunting Collin County is just close, and so that was just like the easier opportunity to to get in the woods. And so it, I could run out there, sit for a few hours, and run home and and do what I needed to do. And so that was just what was easier for my family. And I think this season it'll be. Uh, I'll be out there a lot more than I was this past season. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I I don't know. We've talked about our plans and everything uh, coming up, which I'm, I'm still planning on going out on June 11th and, yep. and doing a, a work day out there. Um, I don't know if my dad's going to get to go with his work or anything. Well, that's to be determined, but, um, and I hope you're going too. I know we talked about it, but we have, I, I need to, I need to nail it down. Yeah. But all as I say, I, I, rabbit trail like we always do um <laughs> like we always for, do. for our listeners for our viewers we're we're about to start working on the this property that you guys have seen us work on already in season one of texas dirt june 11th we'll be filming episode one of season two of texas dirt and getting ready to to kick off another year out there and everything and putting in a, a day out there but um all as i say you know just the the opportunity to, to build something from the ground up you know, is like we've said so many times on here is just, it's invaluable in my, in yeah, my I opinion agree. for sure. And, and I'm excited to see what we do with it. I know, and I was going to, I don't even know how I got off of it, but this was going to be my main point just a few minutes ago. And somehow <laughs> that changed. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, we were out on that property down in central Texas, that first year lease we had, we didn't have a, we didn't have a, a shelter or anything out there so we camped out there and my dad mm -hmm. we, we both have some crazy tent stories from out there and how how we've had to deal with weather and finding out that we're our tents a little too close to a dried up creek bed and you know stuff like that again <laughs> stories that i'm not going to tell either without my dad here or guys can go listen to episode three but yeah. um now we have this camper out there that we're that we'll be in and I know my dad and I made several comments uh, last year about how, man, we uh, we couldn't go back to tent camping. <laughs> It'd be too hard. And and honestly, right. before we got the camper, I think we did spend one night out there in a tent, and it was like, man, this we're not as cut out for this as as we used to be. <laughs> my dad's a little bit older, and I guess I'm a little more bougie or something. I don't know, but uh, that <laughs> hey, that I'm right there with you, man. that that camper definitely. Uh, saved us a lot of a lot of trouble and a lot of cold nights on the ground so yeah. um yeah we still I mean, we still have our feelers out we're planning on getting one too and so uh me and my dad are going to go have these on one and so we if any of our listeners out there got a, a camper they want to uh sell for cheap or even donate <laughs> we are open to that <laughs> let me be clear you're donating to the Nick and Robbie Powell Foundation. You're not donating right. to Fall Obsession with that. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we need to make that clear. This is definitely to me and my dad. This is a person. This is a personal cry for help. Is what this is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It is. I'm, I'm right there with you on the bougie thing. Like I, I had to. Uh, I stayed in my truck for one night, yeah. and that was cold. <laughs> and so, like tent camping, I'm like, eh, you know. Man, not. yeah, you you just get you a, a basic little camper out there, a little heater, and you'll be you'll be squared away. We're, yep, that's all I need. We're we're. Hey, I did learn. Uh, my my uh my family, like my parents, my sisters, and my little sister's boyfriend, all went out there turkey hunting. This, oh yeah, uh, this spring. And my little sister got her first turkey. I'll have to have her on here to tell that story. Cause it's kind of a funny story. They told it to me, but I, I don't want to tell it. Yeah. Don't, don't take anything away from it. We'll, we'll save it for her. And so, uh, they actually found, cause there's only like, I want to say there's like two motels in, in the town, like in the town. Cause our dear lease is not very far from town. So there's two motels in this little small town, but there is also a Airbnb house that you can rent <laughs> and it's no kidding. It, it's, yeah. And it's, uh, trying to think of how it, it ended up being cheaper um for because with all of them going out there they would have had to gotten two rooms two rooms yeah um and so it would have it, the house was cheaper per night than it was for two rooms at the motel hmm. the nicer motel that you know there's one that's like you don't you don't really want to stay at quote unquote nicer <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah 
neither of them are very nice, but they they're better than tent camping. It's so. a small Texas town, so it is. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a one Airbnb house in this little town, and so uh, and they rented it, and so it was uh, actually a pretty sweet deal. That's good to know for sure. Yeah, if we uh, if we have any guests come out there eventually that yes. need a that need a setup that might come in handy. So for sure, for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll have to have her, and I know I've mentioned it to you previously about her successful turkey hunt and then and then some of her deer hunts from last year too you will yep, have to get yep. you to do a brother sister podcast with her um but I, I it was so ironic because our conversation with andy we had just gotten done talking about how there's no turkeys out there we rarely see any nick's dad even yeah. went out there and didn't see any and then you made the comment hey at the time we were recording you're like hey next weekend you know they're going out there for one more try and sure enough, they freaking smoke one. Sure enough, one. she got one. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, well, dang it. <laughs> and it's, a, it's a pretty entertaining story of how it all how it all played out. So I, I'll y'all look forward to that one. Yeah, be be looking for that one in the coming weeks. We'll try to try to make that happen. So, well, man, what else you got? Hey, I was going to ask you about uh, how how's moving into the new place going. Oh yeah, well. If you're watching the podcast video, which you should be watching the podcast video if you're not, yeah. um, you will notice I am in a different environment than I have been with my previously plain brown walls that were behind <laughs> me. Um, but no, it, it, it's going good, man. We're we are uh, we are in a really awesome place. Like I'm, I'm look out my window here. That's behind the behind the camera, and you know I got just my front pasture and trees and fields across the road that I can look at and look out my back door and I'm looking at my trees, you know, so it, it's, yeah. it's a small place. It's two and a half acres. Um, but we, it, it is what we've been looking for and what we've been working toward and everything. So we're, we're really excited. Um, the house is pretty, pretty squared away. Um, yeah. and obviously it did not take me long to put my to put my mounts on the wall um so yeah. i uh i got to put these in my my home office now instead of uh instead of them being in the the game the game playroom that we had in the old house because this house is a bigger house but it has it doesn't have a gamer playroom like the other house it's like it's a bigger house but it's got one less room just all the rooms are bigger i guess is how that works i don't know I'll, but, yeah, I'll take a bigger room for sure but my my wife took my uh my pronghorn mount from 2018 and my two biggest deer that I've killed, they uh, made the cut to be in the living room. So they nice. are on display high up on the wall in the living room and any future larger, nicer mounts can, can join them. Otherwise you get bumped down here to the backup squad in the, in the office. <laughs> the B so, team. Yeah. The B team. So, but, uh, but no, it makes for a good podcast drop. Uh, again, Heck I, yeah. I pointed out that one buck earlier in the episode. So if you aren't watching the video, at least go back and, uh, and check it out to see the new setup and, and see the, that one buck in particular I'm pointing out. And then this wall is blank right now, but this one's going to have, uh, going to have some of my archery accomplishments from previous years, uh, put put up there and then the rest of the office can be firefighter stuff i guess but um <laughs> no it's been going good that we've we've unpacked we've been in this house for a week now and we've we've unpacked pretty quick i mean it's just it's been some long days and and late nights and yeah. everything but we've unpacked pretty quick we had a our first full day in the house we had a a little uh incident where i guess our washing machine we brought our old washing, washer and dryer with us um, from the old house, and it got damaged in the move. Um, we didn't know it. We Like, no obvious damage. Um, but I hook it up first day, turn the water on to the, to the washer and everything. Everything's good. So we had a front load, so I left the door open like you're supposed to so it doesn't get all gross and nasty in there. Mm -hmm. Walk away. Working in the garage, working on the other end of the house, and we don't have any food because we just moved. So we're getting we're getting cleaned up and getting ready to go to dinner that night. And I walk through the living room and I hear what sounds like a toilet running. And I'm like, hmm, probably a, probably a handle needs to be jiggled or something. So I walk to this end of the house, and toilet's not running, but I hear water now. And I walk down the hallway, and the whole laundry room is flooded with water Jeez. and my daughter's bedroom is flooded 
with water and the door to the washer is open water is just pouring out of it and it's not on or anything we never ran it we never turned it on like we hooked it up and that was it yeah so shut the door freak out moment and then we clean it up and did not go to the dinner we were hoping to go to that night just in case <laughs> right. y'all were wondering um we uh and i know this has nothing to do with hunting but this is just my life um we <laughs> end up end up pulling the washer and dryer out and that night um was it that night or the next day i don't even remember now maybe that night um we perused like facebook marketplace and stuff for a used one we bought these used and they'd worked pretty well for us up to that point and i was like you know what screw it um, I'm done with this. I'm going to get a new one. So, uh, sure enough, we go out and took advantage of some Memorial day, uh, weekend sales, but, there you go. um, I could fix it, but I was like, man, I'll never trust that thing again. So I'm officially away from the front load. So I was just like, Wh whatever valve is in there that just keeps that water in check, I guess it got busted enough that it was, uh, under pressure for long enough it broke all the way and I got so because i after we got all cleaned up i shut the door and i turned the water back on without turning the washing machine on and water was just filling the drum so i was like oh okay yeah i got a problem <laughs> so, yeah yeah but other than that that's that's the only problem we've run into so far knock on wood so we'll yeah. we'll see uh hopefully that pretty good that stays strong but no it's hopefully my last move for a long time if ever so <laughs> yeah yeah i hope so too yeah that's that's what i'm hoping for in our next move is going to be last one for a long time yeah well happy for you man that's well, cool yeah thank you yeah we're we're happy we're settling in and uh hopefully i'll be able to get back in the groove of things with fall obsession here in the coming weeks and uh you know get back in my routine so <laughs> there you go yeah we uh once you get all the kinks worked out then you'll be you'll be good to go yeah i, I texted for our listeners i texted nick today and i was like because before i moved we recorded several episodes in advance so we'd be good through the move you know recorded with delaney and andy and uh tyler and kim and i was like oh crap we published the last one last monday or last <laughs> this last yeah. week i was like i gotta i gotta figure something out so uh few hours later here we are but yep um made it happen yeah made it happen and man like i said these these conversations are this this is what i enjoy because it's just this is hanging out with with good people is what it is and we will yeah. uh we got some cool stuff in the work schedule wise uh, for coming episodes as well um next week our podcast guest um with, she's from the pacific northwest kind of a very specific niche up there so looking forward to recording with her and then uh also trying to get our our staffer brendan scott back on the podcast because he just had a successful montana bear hunt um yeah and if you've listened to any of brendan's episodes in the past you know he's a good storyteller so it's, yep, it's bound to be a good time they are all entertaining yeah and then as we already mentioned nick and uh and his sister try to get a get them on the calendar for some time in the near future and I'm sure that something will stem possibly off of our uh, our workday trip out at the lease coming up later this month. So oh yeah, we uh, we try to keep the content relevant to what's going on and what the season is. Um, but like like today, every once in a while, it's it's cool to reminisce and kind of look back. And you know, it, it it's fun to think about think about where we've where we've come from because you know you and I you and I didn't know each other at all growing up or, or anything like right. that. You know, we, we met through, we met through work and everything. And I think where we kind of figured out how much we both loved hunting was when we went to paramedic school together. Yep. So that was, that was six months of torture that, uh, <laughs> that helped with the bond a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, yeah so I'm going through the hard times will, will bring you closer for sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I think that, I think medic school was when you, when you decided to join fall obsession as a staffer yep. and then yep uh i coerced you i guess into taking on more <laughs> responsibility for for less less reimbursement <laughs> however it works so <laughs> yeah. uh it is what it is right now we all know how we feel <laughs> about yeah, that exactly. <laughs> yeah it's been a good time anyways 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep plugging away, and uh, yeah. Hopefully, like like we just mentioned, we got some awesome content coming up and some exciting things this summer. Um, whether it's with the podcast or with the lease, whatever it might be. So, oh, yeah. and unrelated to either of those. Drew, I mean, I'll send you a picture when we get off, and I know it'll probably be on our social media soon. Drew is in Texas right now on an Axis deer hunt. Oh, that's right. And 20 minutes into his hunt, he shot a 35 inch Axis. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Freaking lucky. Yeah. And didn't he get that in an auction or something like yeah, that? Yeah. It, it was. That had, had a steal of a deal. Steal of a deal, and then I think he was supposed to go last year, and it didn't work out, so he's going yeah. this year and everything. So he's been texting me these last couple of days talking about it and everything, and I'm I'm sure he'll be back on here too to, to recap that because that's a pretty pretty awesome opportunity he got to go yeah, on. Yeah, I think so. uh, it was either COVID or the the freeze last year. Yeah. Put a halt, put a halt to it that. It was the freeze. They, that's what it was. Because it that, that freeze jacked up some of those um, exotic herds pretty yeah. bad so jacked up a lot of things man for sure yeah. but now we'll get him back on here and uh another quick update andy if you're listening nick and i put in for our montana pronghorn tags so yes um nobody else put in nobody else put <laughs> yeah. in yeah don't please don't yeah we uh we need our I chances need the best to, odds, like, <laughs> the chances to be the best they can yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll take it to home here uh, for our right. list for our listeners. We uh, appreciate you guys listening or watching, whatever the case might be. If uh, if you guys have not already, go to fallobsession.com. That's our website, and check it out. Uh, we have all of our content on there, literally covering hundreds of different topics in the hunting and outdoor industry. Um, so go check it out. Um, video series, recipes, educational articles. Um, other kinds of media, our podcasts are on there. You name it, we got it. Um, fallobsession.com slash podcast is where you guys can go to actually listen to our podcast, to watch the podcast videos on the website, uh, or to send us feedback on the podcast, guests or topic suggestions. All that stuff is welcome. There's a form on there you guys can fill out. Also, while you're there, head on over and pick you up some new Fall Obsession swag. I'm rocking the Midwestern High t-shirt design as well as our latest and greatest hat, the Desert Hunter Trucker hat, I think is what we called it. Um, yeah. And we got several other designs in stock as well. Some older t-shirt designs that are marked down and like less than 10 bucks for a t-shirt. So with as much as prices are going up and everything, take advantage of that. Can't beat it. So it's a darn um, good deal. Absolutely. Uh, whatever podcast platform you're listening on, be sure you follow and subscribe. We're on all major podcast platforms as well as our YouTube channel. Our podcast videos are on there, so be sure that you go uh, check that out. And we are also now on Waypoint TV, which is a streaming service for hunt. Golly, I said that wrong. I didn't like the way I said that. Is a streaming service for hunting media. You don't have to edit that out. Guys can just hear me have a stroke over here on the on the freaking mic but um a streaming service for hunting media we're now on there fall obsession podcast so another outlet that you guys can go to to listen to our podcast um other social medias facebook instagram twitter we're on those go follow and subscribe also check us out on go wild which is a censorship free um hunting and outdoor app um, so be sure that you guys head on over there, create an account. It's free if you haven't already. And they got a, a pretty cool reward system where you guys, the more you post, you know, you can start or, earning rewards and stuff like that. So it's pretty neat. Um, last but not least, Ridge Rock Hunt Company. I'm normally rocking the Ridge Rock hat, but I'm not today because it's packed and I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> but Derek and Lacey out there in Mississippi, they take really good care of us and they're really good friends of us. They book hunts anywhere in the country. Anything that you want to hunt, wherever you want to go, go check them out. Give Derek a call, and he will find something that works for you in your budget. Um, and on top of that, all of his outfitters in his network are outfitters that he himself has personally hunted with or someone he knows and trusts has hunted with, and they come with a recommendation. So he guarantees that you will have a good experience when you book through him. So Ridge Rock Hunt Company, check them out on social media and their website. Nick? Thanks again, buddy. I enjoyed it, as always. Yeah, I'm always glad to be on here. Yeah, 
we'll be doing it again sometime in the near future for sure. So, Heck yeah. All right, guys. Thank you all for listening. And as always, we're back again next Monday for another Fall Obsession podcast episode, and we will catch you then. See you later.